great for internet uh, safety and security for children. And you see the others here, triplexchurch.com, Craig Gross is a great guy, uh, girlsagainstporn.com, and you see the, other, the others here as well, celebraterecovery.com. So lots of information in this, uh, this mini manual. I encourage you to look back through here and, uh, and just notice some of the steps that we put together. Now, just in the next few moments that we have remaining, a couple things I want to do. First of all, any comments or any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, I, mean, I, I know in general there's a little bit less stigma towards this stuff for men than there is for women, but I know it's like with stu I work with students, and I'm also from Las Vegas, so it's probably a little concentrated in my experience. Sure. Um, but, I, I mean, starting in eighth grade small group, like, I've noticed that probably, honestly, 75 to 100% of girls in my group tend to deal with pornography yes. and issues like that. Um, and I think there's a heightened shame culture yes. because uh, the church tends to like pretend like women don't have sex drives. Right. <laughs> and this has been like right. a huge problem um, that I've noticed. So what would you say for ministry, like, like, and I guess that's kind of a youth ministry Sure. Thing, but it's also for adult women dealing with like specifically right. shame over over issues like this. How do you suggest addressing it? Um, that is in a mixed culture. That is a great people? insight, and I appreciate you sharing that. It comes back to the leaders of that church, whether it's a youth pastor or lead pastor, some pastor giving validity to this, mm -hmm. saying from the pulpit, saying from the platform. We know that this is an issue not only for men, but it is an issue for women as well. I think the fact that pastors have not talked about this issue has given Satan great opportunity to bring shame and guilt and people are suffering in silence. So I would say that if you're in a position of leadership within the church, validate uh, that this is an issue. Because when that comes from the leadership, it almost gives permission for people to be able to talk about it and to struggle with it together. Uh, the fact that we've not done that, had, a lot of people are suffering in shame and silence. So my prayer is for you, your age, see in my age, we just didn't talk about these things in church. But I am so hopeful uh, of people your age in ministry that you're gonna change this. You're going to make a difference. You're going to hit this head on. You're, you're not going to shy away from this subject. And I would say that there, there's a fine line. I know of some pastors who just want to talk, talk, and talk about this for shock value, just to see how far they can go. You know, that's a turnoff. It really is. But to be able to talk about this scripturally, frame it in a, in a biblical context, uh, you know, God is pro-sex. And I think one of the things in the manual that I didn't include in this is that that we need to get back to not only being on the defense saying wrong, 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 we need to talk, talk about how God created sex and how we need to be promoting uh, that among, among couples, incredible, healthy sex. So my hope is that your generation will begin to not only address the issues of the shame and guilt on the porn side, but that you would communicate that healthy gift that God has given through sex. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a children's pastor at a church in Winter Park, and this is definitely God, because literally um, this past Sunday, a parent came up to me and asked me, uh, well, didn't ask me, just told me that she found her son, um, who is in fourth grade, and in his tablet, he was walking porn. Yes. And so she said that it's the third time catching him, and so she doesn't know what to do now, and she's stressed out about it. Um, and so I was just like, oh, Lord. <laughs> so honestly, I didn't know what to tell her. Obviously, I was there for her, yes. and I was listening to her. And I said, hey, let's grab lunch, because it was literally right after service. So I, didn't, right. I wasn't able to really explain anything to her. Exactly. But honestly, I have no idea what to tell her. So right. what can I say to her? You know, if you, if you don't mind giving me your email address, I will send you a whole two chapters on what do you say. Uh, it's to attend a 14-year-old or a 15 to 20-year-old, and it's very specifically uh, on what you can say. Uh, but, but I will get that to you as soon as I can get back to my office. I'll send that to yeah, you. Yeah, because he's only nine years old. Yeah. He's the most... He's the child that you would never expect. Like, he's the one who's always yes. there, like, helping out, 
Oh, can I pray? Right. Yeah, I can pray. Go for right. It. Uh, <laughs> exactly. You know, and I, I, I would say to parents, first of all, don't act so shocked that it's going to shame that child into saying anything else. Yeah. But that, that that parent lovingly says, okay, where did you first see this? Mm -hmm. when, when did this become an issue? And so you begin to ask those questions and a child feels like the parent's not getting on to him or her, but, uh, but that, that that parent is understanding, okay, it's an issue, let's talk about it. So it's creating an atmosphere. And that's what I talk about in these couple of chapters. I will send that to you. I'd be glad to. If you'll just make sure I have that, I'll, I'll get it to you today. Yes. Anybody else? I'm going to do one other thing. Any comments, questions, encouragers? Uh, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. There's so much, and forgive me because I know I threw a lot of things, and I'm so excited and passionate about the subject. I threw a lot of things at once, but go back, if you will, and just look at what we wrote there, what I wrote, and, and kind of uh, look at that. You so, mentioned something about uh, something being in front of the state. Yes. Yes. What thank you. That? Thank you. Thank you. You're a good man. Uh, <laughs> this is a resolution that uh, has just been filed. And if y'all can help me pass those out, that'll be great. And it's gone through the House and the Senate has both filed. And this is a resolution in Florida that states that pornography is a public health crisis. Uh, are we out of town? No, we got five minutes. Five minutes, five minutes. okay. Take a look at this, you all. And this is not coming from a pastor. This is coming from the, the uh, House and the Senate legislature. Whereas pornography is creating a public health crisis and contributing to the hypersexualization of children and teens, and whereas efforts to prevent exposure and addiction to pornography to educate individuals, you see all that, uh, due to advances in technology and widespread availability of the internet, children are exposed to porn at an alarming rate, and it often serves as their first main source of education regarding human sexuality. And you begin to read through this, and you turn over uh, to the uh, other page here, and it says, um, whereas recent research indicates that pornography is potentially biologically addictive, resulting in the user consuming increasingly explicit material to satisfy an addiction, whereas pornography has a detrimental effect on families and is linked to a reluctance to enter into marriage, dissatisfaction in marriage, and marital infidelity. I mean, you go on and on. Again, you would think this would be coming from a pastor. I wish pastors had the guts to get up and say things like this. Mm -hmm. But you all, if you can, encourage whoever you know, and whatever adults you can, to please, please write the senator, state senator, or the um, representative. Kelly Stargell has been a champion, and she's our senator. Praise God for Senator Kelly Stargell. She's doing a great job. Okay? Would you buy, yes ma'am. Okay, so you just mentioned like in, in this resolution, you're talking about um, kind of dissatisfaction in Mary, like how um, would you as a pastor, how would you mend that um, kind of dissatisfaction because now it's no longer the intimacy and the love that the passion that they had. Now they have, like what Jedediah was saying, right. kind of the substitute aspect of it. Exactly. Again, I think, I think the pastors have to validate this, that this is an issue, and they have to paint the picture that pornography has created a distance between you and your mate. How do you get that, that back? How do you get that closeness back? First of all, you, you repent that pornography is an issue, and then you begin to help them know how to restore that. You know, once the pornography is gone, you have an opportunity to rebuild that intimacy. Praise God for that. Would you bow your heads with me for just a moment, and then we'll finish up just within, within one moment. I would be so wrong if I didn't just say at this point, there may be one or two or maybe more in this room who are struggling. It may be you're even watching by video, and you're struggling. And I just want to say to you, confess this to God. Repent. And today, make a commitment that from this day forward, you are going to live a pornography-free life. And that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will, you will continue that commitment 
for the rest of your life. There is so much at stake. You're going into ministry. There's so much at stake. Please, please address that issue now. Father, I pray your blessings over these students. I pray your encouragement. I pray your hedge of protection. God, I thank you for their ministries. I thank you for their future. Lord, you have an amazing future for them. I pray that if they're struggling with porn, they'll deal with it now and allow you, Holy Spirit, to break that chain of bondage in the name of Jesus. Thank you for Dr. Abar and just, Lord, for the teacher, the professor that he is. Bless these students and their families in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time.